What is your most unpopular music opinion? Some gospel songs are actually, objectively speaking amazing music even if you don't want anything to do with the lyrics. Agreed. I love a really good gospel choir where they just get right into it. Not much other music can match the spirit and energy of a really good choir. That I never grew out of my edgy phase because I still enjoy punk and old rock. I've never really grown out of music. I just seem to add on more stuff I like over time whilst still liking the stuff I did as a kid. If you look at all there's a lot of really great music being made today. People who draw some arbitrary line after which they insist there is no good music don't know enough about music to articulate why they like what they like, or aren't looking very hard. I get a giggle from out of the loop classical listeners who cry out they just don't make music like this anymore when in fact, there's thousands of composers creating interesting and enjoyable modern classical music today. People that pee and moan about music not being as good as it was in 19xx usually have the most narrow-minded, neuronic opinions on music. As a hairy metalhead, I'm also a total sucker for really catchy pop. Whilst not unpopular as such in general amongst my friends it definitely is. I have a playlist on Spotify full of Nelly Furtado, Lady Gaga, the Veronica's etc etc, with recent additions of stuff like Ella Henderson and Arva Maximum. Oh she's sweet but a psycho, P. If you're basing what you listen to off of how popular the artist is, you crazy. It doesn't sound any better or worse if they're small or popular. I know a guy who cares why I I I I too much about monthly listeners. It's very freaking annoying. You don't have to be have a good voice be a good singer. An interesting sound can be more important. But there's loads of bands with a main singer with a weird voice very little range that are amazing. Although I can only think of male singers. Ozzy Osbourne especially comes to mind when talking about talented singers with weird voices. Huey Lewis and the News. Their early work was a little too new wave for my taste. But when sports came out in 1983, I think they really came into their own. Commercially and artistically, the whole album has a clear, crisp sound, and a new sheen of consummate professionalism that really gives the songs a big boost. He's been compared to Elvis Costello, but I think Huey has a far more bitter, cynical sense of humor. In 1987, Huey released this, for their most accomplished album. I think their undisputed masterpiece is Hip To Be Square, a song so catchy, most people probably don't listen to the lyrics. But they should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends. It's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey Paul, try getting a reservation at Dorja now you freaking stupid bastard. Most mainstream musicians focus more on their feet tricks and personas instead of music so a lot of it sounds the same and it's bland. Even if it's an oxymoron, distaste for popular music isn't really an unpopular opinion. Mariah Carey is in fact a musical genius. I'm pretty sure Reddit is going to take a giant crap on this and only mention her singular Christmas song. But what I mean is that for a singer with that kind of voice to have written, co-arranged, and co-produced 95% of her own material is pretty incredible, especially when you take into consideration the way her vocals are layered. Her knack for engineering her own vocal climaxes and the way she weaves in different flourishes in each register. It's like she's paints a canvas with her voice. I simply don't hear as many artists fill an entire song with a range of vocalizations the way she does despite the trashy diva image which I suppose turns most people off. Also Tori Amos should be up there with Prince and Michael Jackson and Madonna and whoever else but she's not because she's an indie chick behind the piano. I get the feeling there are a lot of talented female singer-songwriters out there that everyone just assumes are manufactured. Autotune pop stars. You don't need to be an amazing singer to be a worthwhile, talented artist. Taylor Swift can carry a tune but she isn't incredible, yet she really puts on a show and is a great songwriter. I don't really care if an artist autotunes or edits the sound of their voice, especially if it works with a song. Can't sing or play instruments but you've got garage band and autotune down, cool, you can still make good music in my eyes. I'm a 90s metalhead and I think Taylor Swift's two albums from 2020 are some of the best music I've ever heard. I can seriously listen to them on repeat. Music piracy made music better. Money as a motivation to make music was basically removed from the equation. 
Nowadays, the people who make music do so mostly because they're artists. Loads of musicians these days are compelled to create to express themselves, because making music is in their soul, not to pander to an audience and make cash. Obviously this doesn't apply to mainstream music. Luckily for all of us with Spotify, it's now super easy to ignore trashy mainstream nonsense, dig deep and find some real gems. Partly agree, since categorically musicians weren't generally wealthy from working their craft even before piracy, even during that blip in the 20th century where great wealth from musicianship occurred more often, a good many artists got screwed over in record deals and made very little, which is in part why they still tour today. All of which to say, I think the motivation was love of music even before piracy. What improved music was ease of accessibility, discovery of what used to be relegated to deep recesses of niche scenes in specific cities. Monetization is an even more pressing problem for musicians in a world with so much more competition. I think the sheer level of supply is impacting their bottom line way more than the manner in which people consume music. Elton John doesn't get anywhere near the credit he deserves as an all-time great. He should be discussed as a top 5 solo career all-time with only Elvis and MJ really being clear-cut above him. But no one ever even brings him up in those discussions. I've never seen anyone able to write a coherent and borderline hit-level song as quickly as Elton. Give him a sheet of words. They don't even have to be lyrics, and you'll have a hit in 5 minutes. If you don't believe me search Elton John Oven Manual song on YouTube. I saw him in the early 2010s he had the most beautiful live singing voice I've ever heard. Remember the band Blondie from the late 70s and early 80s? Their first 5 albums were absolute gold, every song perfection like hit singles. All of them, not a stinker or filler in the bunch, they really knew what they were doing. Popular music is popular because it's good, people like it, music doesn't have to be deep and have meaning all the time. Sometimes the meaning is how happy you feel when singing along to stupid catchy lyrics on a fun beat. Lil Nas X's music sells more due to the controversy than to his music actually being enjoyable. I love some of his songs, but let's be honest. Montero is the only song from him that sold due to controversy. Most of his other songs went platinum without it. Not really an unpopular opinion. But you can like early 2000s rock music without it being cringe or edgy or dated. Some songs like Num and All The Small Things are honestly some of the best modern rock songs made and can still stand the test of time nearly 20 years later. A lot of people like to crap on pop punk, new metal, emo rock, and all the popular styles of the time but they still secretly jam out to MCR whenever it plays. Muse is a crazy talented band, sure they experimented a lot which contributed to make their three last albums meh, but their first album is the best first album of any band I can think of, you can say all you want about Matthew Bellamy gasping for air like he has asthma, he's still a genius. I love Muse, the more recent albums seem to get bashed a lot by Muse fans but I adore drones and simulation theory, Mercy is one of my favorite songs. Like, Insane Clown Posse, is one of the most incredible acts to ever emerge in the history of music and they deserve as much credit as some of the most revered contemporary rappers of their time. Two middle school dropouts with hopes of being professional wrestlers started rapping about clowns and built an entire career and empire without any help from traditional media sources. Insane Clown Posse didn't start until 1991 but Inner City Posse was formed in 1989. For 30 years they have never stopped, never given up, never done anything other than whatever the frick they wanted to do, all in the face of mountains of opposition from everyone that isn't a gigalo. They have never been taken seriously but have worked harder than most bands combined. Everything they did was done from the ground up with their own hands. You don't have to like their music but it's truly an inspirational story and I hope someday someone does a biopic that illustrates it all. I'm sure this is more a popular opinion. But people who blast their crappy mumble rap music in public are buttholes. No one wants to listen to your trash taste in music. Also another, rather ignorant opinion of mine. I immediately judge people by the type of music they listen to, because I believe music is closely linked to intellect and emotional intelligence and tells a lot about a person's personality. I'm so freaking tired of the red hot chili peppers. They play on every radio station from classic rock to contemporary to weird alternative stations. I can't escape them. 
and all of their songs sound the same, and I've heard every one a thousand times, I'm just sick of them. Here's another song about California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You can still be considered a fan if you've only listened to one song but still respect the band. It's so frustrating seeing people call others fake fans for only knowing like 3 songs. It doesn't matter as long as you enjoy the music. Modern metal is better than classic. Lots of that is due to better recording technology, I will admit. But also, having decades of other artists to be inspired by means that we get all these awesome fusions of styles. And I freaking love it. I respect the trailblazers, but the stuff coming out today is better fleshed out, on average. I swear I've tried several times to get into Taylor Swift's music, but it is just bland to me. For the life of me I can't understand the hype around her songs. Her lyrics are heavily overrated. She is an average songwriter at best. I know you're all coming for me though. She's the most marketable in US for obvious reasons. Long form podcasts and audiobooks are superior to any playlist for a road trip. Killers of the Flower Moon and Bear Brook beat out all the sing-alongs cause after the 5th or 6th song everyone is over it but you keep trying anyway. Meanwhile, Audible has John C. Riley narrating one flew over the cuckoo's nest and it's even better than you'd imagine. Blink 182 is an amazing pop band that wrote amazing songs while having fun and doing it their way. Nickelback songs are really well written have amazing production, and are music business moguls. The Jerry Finn produced albums will always be my favorites. I just can't get into the screaming side of metal. It all sounds awful to me. Like I'm sure a lot of these bands are good. Heck the music itself sounds fine, but the vocals just aren't for me. Conversely though, I do enjoy bands having fun with the music. Alastorm being pirate metal. Gua being. Gua. Even Sabaton who teach you about history. This is obviously not unpopular though. I pretty much grew up with heavy music. And even for me there are certain styles of screaming I just can't. Freaking. Stand. Especially in genres like black metal and deathcore inner vocalists tend to sound somewhere between ridiculous and straight up bad. However screams can add a lot of depth. Dynamic and emotion to music in a way clean vocals just couldn't. Songs like Hederush by novelists, Nihilist by architects or Vultures by Northlane would never work the way they do with just clean vocals. With that being said, I understand everyone who says they can't listen to harsh vocals. All ACDC songs are the same crap. Repetitive riff for a minute. That is solo. The same repetitive riff another minute and then fade away. Nickelback and Imagine Dragons are both okay. If their songs weren't played so much at their peaks, no one would care. But because they became popular, it became popular to hate on them. In order of ranking, Wunk Pop as a genre demands intense amounts of talent. You can watch one of their live performances and it would be clear. That being said, I despise the industry and how it treats its artists. 2. Eminem's lyrical train has stopped at I am the best for a while now. He's no more the guy who delivered songs like Stan, Lose Yourself, Beautiful, like Toy Soldiers. 3. Indie music nowadays has been relegated to ukuleles, random timed beats and nasal voices. 4. Metallica have evolved and given out different kinds of albums with different sounds. Not all of them are great, but I respect artists willing to break the norm and try something different. Vivali is overrated. The Baroque era as a whole I find to be generally underwhelming. But I have no idea how Vivaldi has been so persistent. Gatekeeping is just as toxic in the music fanbase culture as it is in any other fanbase. I don't need to know everything about someone to enjoy their music. Thanks, though. Listening to music in languages you don't understand is far more enjoyable than listening to music in languages you do because you get to enjoy the human presence without having to engage with their problems. Bob Dylan and Stevie Wonder rehearsing together in 1985. Growing up, We Are The World was a really hokey charity single. After some time, today, I'm stunned that so much talent was stacked in one room. For the first time, just this week, I saw the making of, I'd never imagined Bob and Stevie in one room, but it was too touching to see Bob rely on Stevie and how much Stevie was happy to help. 
They very much really respected each other and enjoyed one another's friendship and company. I heard once that Bob Dylan said that America's greatest songwriter was Stevie's mentor, Smokey Robinson. I'm happy to report that Smokey was in the same room this took place. Together with Bruce Springsteen and Diana Ross and Kenny Rogers and Tina Turner and Billy Joel and Willie Nelson and Cindy Lauper and Anna Croyd and... Oh I've got several. Taylor Swift is an okay songwriter and a lackluster performer. What she is very good at is the business image marketing side of things. She is a spectacular businesswoman. I don't care how impressive it is that you're playing in 21 stroke 16. If it doesn't have a good singable melody, you're just jerking yourself off your mixed meter chops. There's a lot of great music being made today. Sometimes you just have to dig through all the mumble rappers to find it. You don't have to know everything about a band to be allowed to be a fan. Music consumers have become too enamored with performance value and spectacle rather than actually good music. Spotify needs to step it the frick up with regard to paying bands for streams, before artists start boycotting them. Music streaming services may be great for discovering new artists getting your name out there, but they're freaking awful when it comes to those artists actually making a living. Since buying whole albums isn't really much of a thing anymore, all of the money in music is from performing and royalties. And sometimes that just isn't enough especially during COVID, when there are no performances. Mumble Rap Trap has its place in hip hop. Not all hip hop has to be lyrical miracle. To extend on your second point, I think it's totally legit for rappers to say nonsensical crap just because it falls nicely on the ear. Obviously a narrative or throw line is more impressive and palatable, but sometimes you just want a spiritual or lyrical miracle to nod your head to. So many of today's singers sound terrible live. So many of today's singers sound terrible live. In Europe we have a song contest called Eurovision. Non-Europeans might have seen the movie on Netflix. Yes, it really exists. While the instruments are not live, singing live is mandatory. Usually there are a few acts during the break, when they count the points, and often they are artists from the country hosting and or previous participants. But then Sweden decided to hire Justin Timberlake. He was amazing, but then Israel decided they needed a big star as well, and they hired Madonna and they found a millionaire willing to pay her fee, because it's Eurovision, she had to sing live just like all the contestants, and it was a glorious train wreck, I have to admit I found it quite funny to see a superstar not being able to sing live while all the unknowns from other countries managed to stay on key and basically upstage her. Sometimes producers should have more credit than artists. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.